Okay guys, I'm assuming you've looked at the lecture on object-oriented programming. Uh, if you haven't, take a look at that now because you're going to need to understand <coughs> you're going to need to understand that lecture before before doing this lecture. So, um, create a new project and create a new file called main.cpp. Okay, good. And now here we're going to create a class, okay? So, to create a class, type class next comes the name so we're just gonna call it dog okay do the two curlies and a semicolon at the end so similar to structure okay now create your main function you all remember how to do that and go dog asterisk dog equals new dog so we're creating a pointer variable of type dog, okay, and dog is our class. And we're creating a new dog on the heap, okay? So remember this will need to be freed when we're done with it. Okay, thanks. So now that you've done that, I want you to go into here and I want you to type public and then the colon. Okay. So anything under here now will be declared public. So it will be accessible from anywhere in our program. Okay. Uh, anything that can see the dog variable will be able to access anything under public. Okay. So now I want you to type integer int get total legs. We'll just do something simple for now. Okay, and now I want you to do private colon integer total legs. So let me explain this so far. So we create a, f a function and it's called a method because it's in a class called get total legs. And this function or method, we'll call it a method for now on, because that's what it's known as when it's in a class, returns this variable here. It doesn't return it yet because we haven't programmed it to. Now you'll see this is private. This means that only this class can access this variable. Because this is public, it means everything outside this class can access it. So go to this semicolon here in this function and just do two curlies again. Okay, And we're going to go return this total legs. So this points to itself. It points to the object of this class. And an object, like I explained in the object oriented um, programming lecture, is simply simply means that you turn a class into an object. And you do this by going new and then the class name. And then this will grab all these variables reserve enough space on the heap, borrow enough space from the heap um, for these variables, okay? So then at runtime, when we're running this program, this will translate to the current object, okay? So we're saying return this, so this object, the total legs of this dog object, that's what we're saying. So now what I want you to do is I want you to make a function called set total legs. So go void because it's not returning anything. Set total legs. And then we're going to go integer total underscore legs. And then we're going to go this total legs equals total legs. Remember to copy this exactly. Because this is a pointer, we access it like a pointer, like explained in the pointers lecture, okay? So this will set the total legs, and this will get the total legs. Okay, so now down here, go dog, set total legs, four. Okay, nice. So now I want you to include IO stream. Okay, so include the IO stream header up here. And then we're going to go <coughs> std cout total legs, dog, get total legs. Okay, 
Nice. So then open your project directory and we're going to run that command, open up the terminal in that project directory and type g++ main.cpp o forward slash main and this would have then compiled our program. So now if you do dot forward slash main you'll see that it says total legs 4. So what we've done, we've created a new dog and we've set its total legs to 4 and then we get the total legs. So what if you want multiple dogs? That's not a problem. Let's create another dog. Go dog, dog2 equals new dog. And now this is a completely separate dog. And we're going to give this dog five legs. It's going to be a bit mutated. Okay? So then in here we're going to go dog1 total legs. And then we're going to go dog2 total legs. And we're going to print out the total legs for the, for the second dog. Okay, so get, make sure you only have one of these, okay? Like that, okay? Just copy exactly as I've done. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay, that's perfect. So if we go back to the terminal and press up until you see the compile command and press enter again, and now do dot four slash main, you'll see dog one total legs is four, dog two total legs is five. So you can see they're completely different objects and this this keyword here that's called this accesses the object at the time. So for example when we're accessing this dog variable is accessing the dog object that we created here. When is accessing this variable is accessing the other dog object when we reference it. Okay? And just to show you how things can be private go up here and type dog total legs equals 91 or whatever you like and then go back to the terminal and press up arrow until you see the compile command and press enter you'll see that it says error dog total legs is private so that basically means we cannot we cannot access it because it's private which is what we wanted because we don't want we want programmers to have to use our methods to set the total legs. Okay, so now that I've shown you this, this is how you set up classes, right? I'm going to show you how to do it properly. Classes should be put into header files and they should also have their own they should also have their own their own uh, C file, okay? So create a new file here and call it call it dog.h. Okay, this is the dog header file. So we're going to go hashtag if not defined, if ndef, dog underscore h, define dog underscore h. And then we're going to go hashtag ndef. So as I showed in the headers lecture, if you don't understand this, you need to go back and read about that. We're basically saying if the dog h definition is not defined, then define the dog h definition. So anything in here will only be declared once, no matter how many times the dog.h is included, basically. So copy and paste this dog class that you made here into the dog.h. Okay? Don't worry about any errors you might see. Okay, good. And now create a new file, and we're going to call it dog.cpp, because it's a source file, okay? And then go include dog.h. So include in the dog.h, okay? Now here you've set these methods, right? These functions. You don't want to do that here. I just showed you that at the beginning to show you how classes worked. The proper way of doing it is to get rid of the body and just have a declaration like this. Okay, good. You keep your variables in this header file. Very important. So now copy and paste these functions here in this header file into your C++ file. Now remember your C++ file must include dog.h. If you haven't done that, this won't work. So that's great. This is correct so far. So by here you want to do dog, two colons, set total legs, like that, okay? Do the same for get total legs. Brilliant. So now what you want to do is, is you want to get rid of the semicolon for the functions and just add the brackets like we've done there. 
Okay. And now type this total legs equals total legs. And then in the get total legs to return, because we're returning an integer, return this total legs. Okay, and that's 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 how you set up classes correctly. So what we're saying is is create two methods, set total legs and get total legs. But we're not gonna define them here. That's what we're saying to the to the compiler. We're not gonna show they exist here. We're just gonna tell you they'll be somewhere in our program at some point. Okay? So if you then go to dog.cpp and we've done dog two colons and we put the method name and we've done the same for get total legs and we've included the dog.h so the compiler is expecting us to fill these to fill out this dog you know it's expecting some part of the program to fill out what what a dog is okay and we filled it out here so we're basically saying we're going to implement the method set total legs in the dog class we're going to implement the get total legs method in the dog class and that's basically what we've done. So now go to your main.cpp file, file and you'll see loads of errors. That's because we need to include the dog.h header file. So include the dog.h header file and you'll see all these errors go away. Okay, nice. So now if you go back to your project directory, we need to now compile the dog.cpp file. Okay, so go g++ dog.cpp dash o dot forward slash dog dot o and then do dash c for compile for to, to, to compile it as a as an object file that's what the dash c means and then you'll see we've got dog dot o that's our object file now you might want to create a make file at this point uh, feel free to check the make file tutorial out and that'll explain that so here we go g plus plus main dot cpp and then we're going to go dog.o dash o dot forward slash main. So what we're saying here is compile our main.cpp file and link it with the dog.o file we've just created. And then our output file will be dot forward slash main. So the local directory and we're calling it main. Press enter and now that's compiled. Now do dot forward slash main and you'll see the program works as before, just as expected. So, to make this simpler, we are going to create a make file. So, create a new file and call it make file, exactly as I've spelt it capital M, make file, okay, and press enter. Now, we're not going to do this properly because um, this tutorial is about classes, not make files. So, we're going to do the most simplistic make file possible. And feel free to check the make files tutorial if you want to know how to do it properly. So type all colon and then we're gonna go we're gonna go tab and then we're gonna go g plus plus dog dot cpp dash o dot forward slash dog dot o dash c. So again once again dog dot cpp is our input file dash o means we're specifying an output file and dot forward slash dog dot o is our output file okay dash c means we're creating an object file okay so down here then press enter we're going to go g plus plus main dot cpp and then we're going to go dog dot o and then we're going to go dash o dot forward slash main okay so basically the commands we just did in the terminal and now once you've saved that go back to your terminal and type make all and you should see it compiles it as before but it, do, it just does all the commands for you okay so now that I've showed you now that I've showed you about uh, about classes we're gonna go more further in depth so next we're going to talk about constructors and destructors so a constructor it is a part of a class and it's basically a function or method that gets called when you create a new instance of the class. And when I say create a new instance, I'm referring to using the new new keyword and then providing the class name, and that brings us back an object. Okay, 
so constructors are generally generally used for setting up the variables and any other setup information that needs to be done um, when the, when a new instance of the class is created. Okay, so press enter and under public I want you to do dog and then two brackets and a semicolon. Okay, so this is our constructor. So go to the dog.cpp file now and we're going to go void dog dog. Ah, uh, sorry, you don't need the void because this is a constructor, so get rid of the void. Constructors cannot return any values. So, so next I want you to include IO stream. And then we're going to go std cout dog explanation mark std endl. Okay. So we include the IO stream to give us output to give us access to the output stream on the terminal. And then when this when this dog variable is initiated, we output the value dog to the terminal. So just to make make all again, and that should compile it. And then do dot forward slash main, and you'll see dog explanation mark, dog explanation mark. That's because we've created two dog objects in main.cpp. Dog one and dog two. So in here, in here, you would basically set up the variables. Um, so, for example, we would go this total legs equals zero, for example. So that I mean, when when you create a new object of dog, to start with, the total legs of the dog is none, zero. So next, I'm going to show you how you can pass things to it to a, to a, to a class to an object when you're creating it. So in your dog constructor, type int total legs. So this is basically the constructor function argument, okay, um, the, uh, function variable. And obviously, if you wanted more, you could do it, you know, just like you can in a function. You can have multiple variables. And then go back to dog.cpp and just do the same. Go integer total legs. Okay, and then down here go this total legs equals total legs. So we're saying set the total legs in our class, in our class object, to the total legs provided. So if you go back to main.cpp, that we now need to provide these values here. Okay, so we would go. 32, 42, okay, and if you just get rid of these method calls here, so it just does that, and then we compile that again, and do dot forward slash main, you'll see dog1 total legs 32, dog2 total legs 42, so that has that has created a new dog, set the total legs to 32, and has created another dog, set the total legs to 42. So you basically call it this just like you would a function, essentially. So let me show you the destructor now. Go to dog.h and type virtual, and then this little silly symbol there, I'm going to zoom in for you. This little symbol here, okay. So you you can find it on the UK keyboards. It's basically where the hashtag is. Just hold shift and press the hashtag, okay. And you, if you're in the UK, um, so this symbol here is uh, is required for our destructor. So our destructor, our destructor, our destructor has this symbol and then the class name, okay whereas our constructor just has the class name okay and we've 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 given it this little keyword called virtual so what virtual means is it means that other other classes can 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 override it and I'll talk more about over overriding things later on but for now let's just 
uh, write that in the header file. So when you've written down the header file, go to your dog.c++ file and go dog, this little funny symbol again, dog, and then two of those, two of those um, braces. Okay. And now this this function here, this destructor, is called whenever our class whenever our class object is deleted, whenever it's removed, whenever we're done with it. So type std cl dog destructed std endl. Okay, good. So now if you make if you do make all in the terminal again and you do dot four slash main, you'll see it isn't being displayed. Well, that's strange. Why isn't it being displayed? Well, it's not being displayed because you have not deleted these variables. Remember what I said, where when you borrow memory from the heap, you must return it when you're finished with it. Very important. So after you output to the terminal, just go delete dog, delete dog two. Okay, and this will delete this will delete the memory that was allocated for this dog. And this, and this will delete the memory that was allocated for this dog. So if we compile that now with make all, and we run that, you'll see dog destructed, dog destructed. Okay. So next I'm going to show you what function overloading is. Function overloading is where we have two functions with the same name, but one of those functions takes different arguments than the other. So, for example, let's create a function here. We're going to call it void overload1. No, uh, we're going to call it void overload, okay? Overloaded function, we'll call it. Now, do you know how to keep it simple? Just call it my function, okay? And then that's going to take no arguments whatsoever. And then I want you to create another function down here called my function. And this will take an integer. Okay, now I want you to copy and paste these into dog.cpp. Anywhere you like. And we're going to get rid of the semicolon. Get the curly braces there. And then go dog, two colons. Dog, two colons. Okay. And now I want you to type in here stdc out my function with no arguments. And then down here go stdc out my function with integer arguments. So now, so now if someone calls this my if someone calls my function on the dog object with no arguments, it'll call this one. But if somebody calls my function on the dog object and they pass an integer, it'll call this one. So let's test this out. Go to main.cpp and go dog my function. And then go dog my function and we're just going to pass 22. Okay. So now go back to the terminal and type make all and then do dot four slash main. And you'll see my function with no arguments, my function with integer argument. So what we've done is we've called my function with no arguments in the dog object, which calls this function because we pass no arguments. And then we call my function in the dog object and we pass 22. Now 22 is an integer, right? So it calls this this argument. So that's function overloading in classes in C++. So next I'm going to show you inheritance. What is a dog? Well, a dog is an animal. Okay. So it makes sense to have an animal class. And a dog will extend an animal. This will mean that the dog will inherit all the animal's properties. Any variable we declare in the animal class, it'll inherit. Any functions, it'll inherit. So let's do that now. So create a new class, uh, create a new file called animal.h. 
and type hashtag fndef animal underscore h to find animal underscore h. And now do hashtag ndef. So then here we're going to go class animal and we're going to create a code block for that and we're going to do hash uh, we're going to do semicolon at the end okay so do public colon because we want um, some functions in the animal class to be public right and we're going to create a constructor for the animal and a destructor okay so that's all I want to do so far just to show you guys the basics so create a new file called animal.cpp good and now here do hashtag include animal.h okay and go back to your animal.h file and copy these methods into this C++ file good so now we're going to want to go animal and two colons get rid of the virtual because we don't need to define it in the actual C++ file just in the header file so then go animal two colons now get rid of these semicolons and create a code block okay good so this is the constructor for the animal and this is the destructor so then in your dog.h file, go into your dog.h file and, and do in the after class dog do colon public animal. Okay? And then above that include the animal header file. Good. So we've set we've created a class called dog that extends animal. Okay? So if we then go to dog.cpp in the constructor after here go colon animal okay so this says when we create a new dog class uh, class object invoke the constructor of the animal and here if we had if we had variables in the constructor of animal we'll pass them here so maybe we're accepting the total legs in the animal class instead in the constructor of the animal class would pass them here okay but because our constructor is blank we can just leave it as that good so now go to your make file because we need to add this new animal.c++ file in this make file right so go g++ animal.cbp animal.o uh, no sorry uh, animal.cbp dash o dot forward slash animal dot o dash c and this has to be above this g plus plus main dot cbp so copy it and put it above here so what we're saying is compile dog dot cbp compile animal dot cpp and then finally we need to put animal dot o here so then the final compile command will say compile main dot cbp and link it with dog.o and animal.o and our output file will be dot four slash main okay so go back to your terminal and type make all and there we go uh, do dot four slash main and you'll see it runs as before okay good so if we go to animal.cbp now and we include the io stream header file we can go stdc out animal constructed std and l and go to the destructor and type stdc out animal destructed std and l okay so if you do make all again and run that you'll see it says animal constructed my function with no arguments my function with integer argument and then it says animal constructed again now this is because we haven't deleted uh, the dog variables if we deleted them it would also say animal destructed okay so in here we could also have a message so if we go stdc out dog constructed 
in the dog constructor, sdndel, and we go make all, and we do dot for slash main, you'll see animal constructed, dog constructed, animal constructed, dog constructed. So the animal constructor gets invoked first, then our dog constructor. Okay? Very important to know that. So, that is inheritance. So a dog is now an animal. So now let's make things interesting. In the animal.h file, we're going to create a new, a new um, function method that gives us the speed of the animal. So go int get speed. Okay, and then go private colon integer speed. Good. And then if we copy the get speed method and we put it in the animal.cbp class down here and we go animal two colons return this speed. Okay, good. So let's let's have the animal constructor accept a current speed, okay? So we're gonna go in the constructor of the animal, we're gonna go integer speed. So go to animal.cpp and again up here go integer speed. And we're in here we're gonna go this speed equals speed. So that'll set the speed of the class object to the speed provided in the constructor. This also means we need to change dog.cpp to also take the speed. So in here, we're gonna go, we're gonna go and provide our speed. So we'll just do, we'll just do 20. Okay. Yep, that's correct. So if we compile that now, you'll see it compiles fine. If we do dot forward slash main, we see the same. If you guys see an error in your code editor, there is no error, it's correct, okay? So if you go to main.cpp now, um, and we go std cout dog speed dog get speed std and l. So if you do make all in the terminal now and go dot for slash main, you'll see dog speed equals 20. So what's happening here? We haven't declared get speed in the dog in the dog class. Well yeah although although get speed isn't declared in the dog class, because we extend animal, we also extend everything from animal, including the the variables and the functions and the methods. So, by extending animal dot, by extending the by extending the animal class, we also get access to the get speed variable uh, function, which is quite handy. Now, if you go to dog.cbp again, and in the in the set total legs, now I tell you what, not in the set so not in the set total legs in the constructor here, we're going to go this speed equals thirty, and do make all again. And you'll see an error. Animal speed is private. Well, a way to get around this is we could set we could set it to public, but then that also means that even in places like main.cpp, they'll be able to go dog speed equals 32. And we don't want that. So what we can do, we can set it to private, uh, to protected. So if you if you type protected here. This will mean that we can change it. Any class that extends animal will then be able to change it. So if we if we do make all now, it compiles fine. And then if we go dot for slash main, you'll see that it says dog speed is 30. So that's inheritance for you. So now I'm going to show you function overriding. So what function overriding is, is where we want to override a function. 
so that we can use it ourselves. So this is very easy to do. Um, go to dog.h and we're going to override the get speed fun uh, method from the animal. So we're going to go firstly firstly we need to declare get speed virtual. Okay? So go virtual get speed. Okay? Next next we're going to um, well this is it for the header file for animal next we're going to go to dog.h and because in the animal header because in the animal class we declared it virtual it means we can override it okay so go to dog.h and type virtual get speed so it's be, uh, virtual uh, integer get speed so what this basically means is we tell the compiler we're overriding the get speed method in the animal class. We want to control this method. We don't want animal to control it anymore. We want to control it. So then when you've done that, just go to your dog.cpp file and just chuck it in at the bottom by there. Remember, get rid of the virtual because you don't need to declare that in the C++ file. And go dog, two colons, get speed. And now here we can return any, any value we like. Just type anything you like, return a million if you want, and then go make all in the terminal and go dot for slash main. And now you'll see the dog speed is 39,328. But how can that be? Because in the animal, the speed is set to the speed is set to 20. So that doesn't make any sense, right? Well it does make sense because we've basically said we no longer want animal to control this method. We are overriding it for for the dog class. So any dog, any dog method, any if the get speed method is called on a dog class object, we need to call the dog's version, not the animal's version. So then, what if I also want to call the the method of the base class? The base class is what is what we're extending from. Okay, which in this case is animal. Well, in that case, it's easy. You just go animal get speed. Nice and simple. So we're saying we we are we're overriding the get speed method, and then we're returning the animals. Uh, we're calling the get speed method on the animal, and then returning the value. So this means that it goes through us before we go to the animal. So if you go make all now, and then do dot four slash main you'll see 20 as you saw before because we're returning control to the animal class and maybe you want to just adjust the speed a little bit so just go integer speed equals animal get speed plus 20 and then we return the speed so this means anyone who calls get speed on the, on the dog dog class object we get the current animal speed which is our base class and then we add 20 to it and return that speed. So if you do make all now and you do dot forward slash main, you'll see that it says the dog speed is 40. So sometimes it's necessary for us to enforce a class to do something. So for example, so for example, maybe an animal requires an action method to be created. Because, you know, maybe, maybe a certain action happens for dogs. You know, if it's in a game, maybe it's movement, you know, anything you like. So that's very easy to do, and I'm going to show you that now. Go to animal.h. And type virtual void action. And then go equals zero. So this is called a pure method in C++. And what a pure method means, it means this animal cannot stand alone. So you cannot create an animal. Okay, uh, something has to extend the animal. You can't just create an animal. You can create a dog, you can create a cat, but you cannot create an animal on its own. Okay, so that's the first thing that it does, which is useful. It prevents this, to, it, this becomes abstract. It prevents it 
from being created on its own. So when we go virtual void action, action is our function name, our method name. It takes no arguments and it's pure. So if you try to compile that now, you'll get an error. So go make all and you'll see it says it says invalid new expression of abstract class type dog. And this is because we haven't overrided the void action uh, method in our dog class. So go to your dog.h and type virtual, ac uh, virtual void action, semicolon. Okay, so now we need to put that in our C++ file. So go down here and go void dog action. And then go stdc out dog action invoked. Okay, that's very good. So now if you go to main.cpp and we go dog action and then we go make all and then we go dot forward slash main, you'll see that it says dog action invoked. And this is because we've invoked the action on the dog. So when we go dog action, it goes to the animal class and it, th it says, hmm, okay, this is pure, so we're not going to find what we want here. Let's take a look in the dog, because the dog is what's extending animal. And then the dog says, yeah, I have that. And then it invokes the dog. You understand? So then the dog method, the dog action method is then invoked. So that, that's pure methods for you. So I'm going to show you another cool thing with classes. And basically, because our dog class extends animal, it means that any type of animal, uh, it, means that it, it means that any variable that accepts an animal can accept anything that extends it. So in our case, it could be, it, it could be a dog. And if we had a cat class, it could be a cat. So we could literally go animal, animal equals new cat, animal, animal equals new dog. I'm going to show you that here. If we go down here, we go animal, asterisk. Firstly, we don't have to include the animal header file because the dog header file includes it. If you go to the dog header file, we include it here. So there's no need to include it twice, just to let you know. So if we go down here, animal, asterisk, animal, now remember the asterisk is because this is a pointer, remember, equals dog, semicolon. So what we're saying is, we're not creating an animal first, okay? The animal's already been created. We've created it here. We've gone dog, dog equals new dog. And then we're saying animal, animal equals dog. So it isn't copying it in any way. It's just pointing to it. Remember, these are pointers, okay? Take a look at the pointers lecture if you don't understand what they are. So down here then, we then have access to everything to do with, to do with the animal. But obviously we can't, we can't call methods in the dog because the compiler sees it as an animal. It doesn't see the dog methods, but we can call anything that's in animal. So we can call our action method that's pure. We can call our get speed method, any of that. So if we go stdc out animal speed, animal get speed, you'll see that it outputs exactly the same speed as our dog speed because they're the same object. They're the same entity. So if we go make all and then we go dot four slash main, you'll see that it says animal speed 40, dog speeds 40, which is completely correct. And here we can even we can even we can even go animal action. And now let me give you guys a few seconds just so you can guess what this does. Okay, so what this does, this invokes the action method on our dog object because we've got an animal animal equals dog, and animal holds a pointer to our dog object. So when we go animal action, it actually calls the pure the pure method that was overloaded, uh, overrided, that's called action. So it'll actually say dog action invoked. 
because it'll go to the animal and it'll it, it'll go to the animal and know that it's overrided know that it's overrided and because we're pointing to a dog object it'll know that it was the dog that overrode it so if we go make all dot false slash main you'll see that it says dog action invoked even though it's an animal because we point the animal pointer to the dog pointer and the compiler knows that the dog that the compiler knows that this animal is a dog okay so that's some really cool stuff that you can do with classes in C++.